Hello ladies and gents, welcome to another repair video. Today we're going to be taking a look at this PlayStation 4 which has been sent in. And this particular console has been sent in because it has no display, or at least that's what I can gather from the ticket that come with it. So if we take a look at the ticket, we can see that it says PS4 original HDMI IC chip slash HDMI filter replacement. So that must mean that it's got no display and that it's not a HDMI issue. So we're going to take a look, see what's going on with it, and then see if we can get it fixed. So I'm going to plug it in. So let's pop some power into there and a HDMI cable. There we go. And let's try and turn it on. Okay, so I can hear that there's a disc in there. We've got FIFA 21. Okay, so let's switch to the capture card then and um, we have a display which is odd because it's been sent in for no display okay and that appears to be loading fine so let's switch to let's check the resolution And that appears to be working on 1080. And 480p as well. And then back to 1080p. So why has this been sent in? That is quite strange. So if we take a look at the TV over here, I can see that it is actually displaying. So it's quite odd how... I mean, there's, there's a few reflections at the minute. It's quite bright outside. But that appears to be displaying just fine. So the question is, why has it been sent in? Hmm. Odd. Okay, I'm going to have to get in touch with Console Repair London, figure out what's going on, and resume the video in a moment. Let's just give that the wobble test. Oh. Okay, so it needs a port. So it's going to need a port, but that could also be just flux in the port or flux in the cable. So let me give the cable a clean using isopropyl alcohol. So all I'm doing is just scrubbing out the cable here with. Uh, isopropyl alcohol and a toothbrush and I'm going to pop the disc in the disc is a little bit iffy to load just struggle a little bit with the disc but what I'm also going to do is just clean out the port as well so I know you can't see this very well because I'm quite zoomed in on this camera, but never mind. So let's plug it back in again. And straight on. And now it's working fine. So one thing I am going to do, because this at the moment is going through a a lot of different things so it's going from the ps4 into a hdmi splitter uh, where it splits one connection into four or in this case two but then this that splitter is going to the capture card and to the tv so that could be affecting whether or not it's showing any kind of signal so what i'm going to do is just take the hdmi cable out of the splitter so let me just make sure that's the correct one Alright, so this one here is going directly to the TV now, so let's plug that in. Or at least it should be. Let me just double confirm that. 
and yep absolutely that that cable is going to the TV right now and it's not it's not picking up the signal at all so it looks like this does have a video issue and for some reason the capture card is affecting that and stopping it from showing up properly which is kind of strange really so let's take it apart let's see what see what's going on because it's most likely going to be the HDMI encoder that's at fault I'm going to need to reroute all of them cables now and actually let's let's try turning it on now now that I've just turned the console off and back on again so HDMI cable is in and that's going to that TV so it's going just to the TV now not to the capture card and yes I know that that screen is broken I brought it specifically as a broken TV just to use for this exact reason because sometimes the capture card can affect the video output so let's just see if we get anything on the screen HDMI displays are kind of strange something happened between the console the splitter and the TV that allows it to display with uh, with a faulty encoder maybe I don't know really I don't know it's strange um, but it is a thing and that's the exact reason that I wanted a TV an actual TV in the workshop it's the same with the monitor um, very rarely I will get a console in where I will try and turn it on and it's supposed to have no display and it will have a display on a monitor but it won't have a display on the TV and it's really really strange and I don't know why so if you do know let me know uh, because it would be interesting to know uh, but this is not displaying on the TV it is still turned on uh, I will show you that there so it's just rebooting now uh, after it's done the system storage check it's just rebooting and uh, it's still got no display on the TV so let me just make sure that it's not <clears throat> so let me just make sure that it's not switched over and it hasn't and nothing's picked up nothing at all is picking up so it's not even registering that the console is there so there's definitely an issue so let's unplug it let's switch to the overhead camera and we'll see what we can do so that's the problem with doing videos is I need to be extra careful and make sure that they are and make sure that everything is working this is one of the main problems with doing videos but never mind I will cope if you are new to the channel and you like what I do while well, I've got your attention don't forget to hit that subscribe button it is absolutely free to subscribe cost you nothing and all you do is gain so if you are new to the channel and you like this type of content I would really appreciate it if you hit subscribe so I'm going to take this apart then this is very likely going to be an issue with the HDMI encoder itself which is responsible for decoding the video signals and converting them into something that the TV can read I'm really not sure what happens between the splitters and uh, my setup in particular that allows consoles to work with a faulty HDMI encoder it's very very strange it's very strange indeed but that being said that's why I bought the TV in the first place and that's why I bought a broken TV I don't need a, bro a working TV as long as I can see the screen um, believe it or not there was only one line on that TV when I brought it there was one line running down the middle around about a centimetre wide um, I brought it into the workshop and it cracked even further but like I said I'm not bothered because it does what I need it to do and it repurposes I actually had someone the reason I'm bringing this up is because I actually had someone the other day a couple of days ago telling me that I looked bad that I look like a bad technician because I'm using a broken TV and my response was 
And in fact, someone else's response was, and I appreciate, I'm not going to mention the name, but I appreciate that person. But their response as well was, how does he look bad? How does he look bad for repurposing something? And they've got a very good point. On keeping that device out of landfill, it is next to impossible to find a screen for a 4K television. Uh, for anything less than 80% of the cost of a TV. It's not worth fixing them. The manufacturers make sure of that by selling the screens re at a really high price. Uh, if at all, if you can find one at all, I'd be lucky to find a screen for that, let alone at a reasonable cost. So, by repurposing it to use as a test screen, it keeps it out of landfill and it reduces, I, know, I mean, I know one TV doesn't make a difference, but uh, it still reduces its footprint. It still helps the planet, and I, I'm not a I'm not a help the planet person. I'm not I'm not one of those types of people who, you know, go absolutely insane if you throw if you throw uh, a plastic bottle into the rubbish. You know, I'm not a recycling fanatic or anything like that. No offense to the people who are. That's your forte, not mine. Um, but I still like to be able to salvage things and save myself a little bit of money while I'm at it, whenever I can. Because why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I want to save myself some money? And uh, at the same time, repurpose something for the same use, the same purpose, but at the same time, a different purpose, if that makes sense. And I've just swapped from my Torx bit to the Phillips bit without thinking that I've got to remove the three screws from the power supply. Because I'm a numpty. Never mind. Okay, we have 500 gig hard drive. So I'll just remove these power supply screws. There we go. Switch back to the Torx again because I'm a numpty. Just to take another three screws out. Power supply. There we go. Disk drive ribbon. I will point this out if you are going to be taking one of these apart. This disk drive ribbon does not just pull out. Um, there is a metal clip there which you need to push down and that disengages the pins and prevents it from damaging the connector. So, time and time again I keep seeing people with damaged connectors where it doesn't quite go in right or it won't go in at all because they don't press that button when they're trying to remove the ribbon. And they're not the easiest things to replace, those connectors. They are not the easiest things to replace at all. Okay, so... I'm going to get rid of that, move that out of the way, take the board out, and we are ready to test. Or ready for diagnostics, rather. Okay, so there's a set process which I go through when it comes to display issues, when I'm trying to figure out what's, ex what's actually wrong. And... The reason for that is because then I can test all of the components, even though I pretty much know that it's probably going to be the HDMI encoder, I'm still going to test the components, even the ones that would prevent it from working completely, um, just so as I can run through the process and actually perform all of the necessary tests that I would normally perform on something that doesn't display at all. Even though this one displays on the capture card, but it doesn't display on the TV, I'm still going to go through all of the tests. So moving over to the microscope then you can see that we've got the HDMI port here. So the HDMI port is the first port of call, pun intended. And this has definitely had a replacement port in the past. This is not a factory original port so I am going to test and check this port just to make 100% sure that it is soldered correctly before I go any further. So I'm just going to give these pins a nudge test, even though 
like I said, it does display. And ignore that bit of green stuff that's coming up coming onto the port. That's just solder mask. I was doing a trace repair on a Nintendo Switch before this. That video will probably come out before this one. Pin number 18 is not soldered. So pin number 18 is the 5 volt pin. Um, basically this provides power to the HDMI circuit. So that pin is not soldered. So all of the other pins are. That one is not. That could be why it's not working. So I'm going to solder that first of all. And just fix that up right now. Won't take more than a second. So I'm just going to take the soldering iron. And I may as well just touch up all of these pins. If I'm going to do one, I may as well do them all. Like I said, it doesn't take long. So I'll add some more flux here. So I'm not sure who actually soldered this, but I should have checked the work. But that could very well be why it's not displaying. Or at least why it's not displaying on a TV. So let me just clean up that flux and I can check them again, make sure that they are actually soldered this time. Lesson number one, always check your work. If you're going to be doing this kind of work you need to check and make sure that it's done properly otherwise you are going to get issues like this so this has had a replacement port so that tells me that the original port was damaged at some point in the past so again that could lead to a faulty hdmi encoder it could lead to a faulty emi filter uh it could it could be pretty much anything so i'm going to go through the process and just do the tests on this side of the board the ones that I can do without removing the EMI shield off the other side. So I'm going to, I don't want to remove that EMI shield unless I absolutely have to. So I'm going to basically do the tests I can do from here. And then I'll put it back together enough for testing just to see if it displays on the TV. So as you see there, those pins look so much nicer so much nicer so let's just give these all the nudge test so i'm going to zoom in a little bit so even though i can visibly see that these are soldered and i'm 100 percent sure that they're soldered i'm still going to check them and yep absolutely so they are all absolutely fine so like i said i'm going to do some basic checks before i put it back together for testing like i said that could very well be the reason why but i'm going to do some basic tests anyway so i'm going to switch the multimeter into diode mode and pop red probe on ground i'm going to check this diode here on the right hand side and we get 0.495 which is perfectly normal this one here 0.495 this one here 0.501 yep perfectly normal and this one here on the left hand side 0.501 perfectly normal readings this one we check on the right hand side 0.588 perfectly fine so now i'm going to switch the leads around and test black probe on ground and we get open line open 
open line. I apologise about the dogs barking. Nothing but hassle since that neighbour had those dogs. And all of those test absolutely fine. So I'm going to pop into continuity mode now and just check on the resettable fuse which is located just here and it's marked as TH2001 with a big arrow pointing to it and that fuse is absolutely fine so that all tests out okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it back together test it on the TV again see if it works if it doesn't, then I'll take the EMI shield off, test the EMI filters, and if they test fine, then I'll just replace the HDMI encoder. I'll just get that microscope out of the way. Turn the multimeter off, because I keep killing batteries, which is really annoying. Um, what I'm going to do, like I said, I'm just going to put this back together just enough to test it out. So I'm not going to screw everything down, I'm not going to replace the thermal paste, I'm just going to turn it on. Although, to put it back together, turn it on, see if it displays... If it doesn't, then I haven't wasted any more time. If it does, then I'll just take the motherboard out. It takes an extra one minute, but it also saves me saves me from replacing the thermal paste more than once. So I would much rather do it all before I replace the thermal paste and stuff. This could lend this could lead to a very quick video. Right, so let's switch back to the Phillips screwdriver just to screw these in. Uh, my TV's just gone off, lovely, just at the right time. I'll turn that back on so it's on when I'm ready. There we go. So this is going to need a service as well, it's going to need a bit of a clean, which I always do on the consoles, um, provided I'm, I'm able to fix them, then they get cleaned before they get put back together anyway. Just a little rule I have, if you clean the console for the customer, it makes them happy and they keep coming back. Okay, so, like I said then. Let's just put it back together, just enough to test. So that's going to be literally, put the power supply in, pop in the hard drive, and that's it. Same cable as before. And let's give it a whirl. Okay, so let's see if the screen comes on now. PS4 connection is automatically enabled. So that's picked up that as a PS4 net there this time. So where is it going to turn on? It has registered that as a PS4. So let's see. Why is it on the wrong source? Input one. There we go. That's picking up and working fine by the looks of it. So I'm just going to let that reboot now, just to let it complete the power cycle. And hopefully, when I turn it back on, or when it comes back on now, it should work in 1080p. Let's see if it does. Okay, I think I need to clean the port.
Okay. Um, this controller needs to be plugged in because the battery doesn't work on it. So it's literally my test controller. Can't be bothered to fix it. So yeah, there we go. And oh no, it was that one, wasn't it? it loads, it loads the last used account. I hate it when I see a passcode. And yep, yeah, that is working absolutely fine. So that all appears to be fine now. Um, which I guess leads us to the question as to why the last person who worked on this didn't check the work when they changed the HDMI put cable. So, yeah, that's the model of this story. Check your work. Um, if you're going to do this kind of work, always, always double check it. It doesn't matter how much it looks like it's work, it's soldered. Check the work anyway, because there's always a chance that you can have one loose pin which can cost the customer money. And the reason it's going to cost the customer money is because I've had to spend time to disassemble it. I've also got to have I've, I've also got to spend time to um, clean it and reassemble it and also to replace the thermal paste as well, which costs money. So this is going to cost the customer money for one simple pin. I'm not going to charge any labor, but I will charge a diagnostic fee and I will charge a um, you know just the minimum fee which is 30 pound. Uh, now I know that seems a little bit steep, but I've still, like I said, I've still got to put this back together. I've still got to clean it. I've still got to replace the thermal paste. So my minimum diagnostic fee is thirty pound. I don't charge that if I can't fix it. I don't have a repair attempt fee, but I do have a diagnostic fee if I have to do stuff like this because it still takes time out of my day. Time out of my day where I could have been either spending it with my family or working on another device, which I've got plenty in the queue to work on. So. Because of one simple pin, that customer unfortunately has got to pay a diagnostic fee. It is what it is. Uh, that's just the nature of the beast. Um, but yeah, just just check your work, guys. If you're going to do this kind of work, just check it afterwards, and we, we can avoid these problems. But that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you are new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell notifications so that you're notified every time that I release a new upload. If you do want to support the channel and you enjoy what I do, then you can do so by clicking on the video links down below, or the Amazon links rather. They are affiliate links and I do get a little bit of a kickback every time you buy something on Amazon through my links. doesn't matter if it's something that I'm promoting, such as the equipment that I use here, like the microscope, the hot air, the soldering iron, that sort of stuff. Um, even if you just click on the link um, and then buy something else, something completely unrelated, you can buy a new bed and I'll still get a little bit of a kickback. It does help. So uh, you can also become a channel member for as little as £1.99 per month or you can become a Patreon supporter as well. And I think that's £3 per month uh, for Patreon as the minimum tier. Um, all Patreon supporters and all channel members do get early access to these videos. Uh, so basically the way, that do, the way that I do that is... I'll upload a video, I'll put it on members only, and then when I upload the next video, I'll release the last video to the public. But that's going to be it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. If you do have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comment section down below. But other than that, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I'll see you later. Bye for now.